from the Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock, this is Capital View with your host, Jesse Tenor. Good Sunday morning to you and welcome into Capitol View. I'm Jesse Tenor. Amid all the drama over the Mueller report and congressional subpoenas, the White House and lawmakers are considering a massive infrastructure deal. This morning, I'll talk to former Little Rock Mayor Mark Stodola about Arkansas's biggest needs and the work it'll take to make a plan like this happen. But we begin with a first in Arkansas. It's been six years since the state passed Medicaid expansion. That helped prevent rural hospitals from closing, at least for a while. But D Queen Medical Center in southwest Arkansas is now closed after facing financial uncertainty for months. Although several factors led to this closure, it could be just the first of more to come. Without DeQueen Medical Center, the community needs a hospital or we don't have anything. Ambulances have to transport patients at least 35 miles away for help. But we have to have a place to stabilize. It's the first rural hospital to close its doors in Arkansas since the state became the first to expand Medicaid. Our expansion in the state of Medicaid helped secure the, the viability of rural hospitals in particular for a period of time. I think we're coming to the end of that period of time. During the last decade, nearly 40 rural hospitals in surrounding states that did not expand Medicaid closed. Now the natural state will get its first red dot with more on the way. There's some other complicating factors with DeQueen, but, but I think it is the first I think of uh, several that are going to have more financial strain on them in the coming years. Dr. Joe Thompson, the state's former Surgeon General and the president of the Arkansas Center for Health Improvement, also anticipates an end to the critical access hospital designation, which nearly 30 hospitals across Arkansas, including DeQueen, have depended on for funding. We need to rethink what and how we support rural hospitals and rural health care across our state. For example, under current state licensing requirements, local communities must have a full-service acute care medical center, something Dr. Thompson says could change. The overhead and the operating cost are making it where that's more and more difficult. And joining me to discuss this and much more are Republican State Senator Kim Hammer and Democratic State Representative Vivian Flowers. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the show. Good morning. Good morning. So let's start here. Senator Hammer, you were one of the few no votes in the Senate on the appropriation bill that included Arkansas Works this session. Mm -hmm. And then Representative Flowers, you were a yes vote both times that it came up on the House floor. So could you just explain those votes first? I guess it's always yes, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, my vote, and I think I... I got up and, and spoke a few words, mm -hmm. uh, I feel very strongly that we have to take care of our people. That, um, you know, those dollars don't represent the politics of Washington, D.C. Those dollars represent health care access to the people of Arkansas, especially our most vulnerable people. And so in my mind, a yes vote was the only vote. <laughs> and then Senator Hammer, why were you on the other side? Sure. On that particular day that the vote was taken in the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, we were still waiting for the judge to rule. Uh, ironically, coincidentally, perhaps uh, arranged, but we may not never know. Uh, but when the vote was taken, um, we realized about an hour and a half later that the judge actually ruled. So my vote of no at that time was because I'm a strong proponent that the work requirements need to stay as part of Arkansas Works. And knowing that the judge was about to rule, wanted to find out how that ruling was going to go. Uh, you followed the vote all the way through when it got down to the actual uh, vote for the overall budget. I did vote for it, but I wanted to find out what the judge was going to do an hour, hour and a half later after it voted. Uh, the judge did indeed rule that you know it was unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. So still, I mean, these, year, these years later, these six years later, you both support Medicaid expansion in our state? Oh, absolutely. I, I encourage, well, I support helping individuals who need help, but also support that people need to have some skin in the game, sort of say. And that's why I think that, you know, the component of works, being involved in Arkansas works is important. And I think that's proving itself out over time that it's a, it's a healthy thing uh, that we need to keep in the mix of the discussion. Mm -hmm. And then in my interview with Dr. Thompson, he was saying that Medicaid expansion really just kind of bought rural hospitals here some more time. How much did that come up in discussions you know, over these years about the impact that it could have on rural hospitals and health care? I'd like to point out that when um, Governor Hutchinson was first elected, and I was still working at UAMS, and so I remember um, when he made his remarks, and I think the first time he made remarks about health care, 
he acknowledged then, and I, I bet you on some level would have to acknowledge today that it is because, I mean, when you look at those red dots, mm -hmm. you can't deny that uh, Medicaid expansion uh, is something that has helped to ensure that people in rural areas have access to care and therefore hospitals um, have been able to be paid for the work that they provide, for the health care that they provide. So I think that Medicaid expansion has really served Arkansas to save rural hospitals at a time when many across this country have closed. Mm -hmm. I would agree that as far as the viability of hospitals and the sustainability of hospitals in rural Arkansas, that uh, Arkansas works in doing what we did. Go, and I was here in the beginning, back when it was the private option. Uh, and I think it's you know hard to argue against the uh, support that that has given to the rural hospitals in order to be able to sustain themselves and stay open. And, and as Representative Flowers pointed out on the map, you know we, we have red dots all around us. And I think that's why you see other states realizing that there is some viability to the discussion of, of doing what we've done and trying to be a leader in the nation with Arkansas Works in order to uh, support our rural hospitals. And then do you, like Dr. Thompson, anticipate the state adding more red dots in coming years? I think you've got to look at some of the history of the individual hospitals. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked for a hospital myself before. A lot of it comes down to the management system. A lot of it comes down to the strength of the company that purchases uh, with regards to the hospital that closed. Um, you know, they were purchased, I think, about a year, year and a half ago. You got to look at the uh, integrity of the management ability. You also have to look at the adaptability uh, to the environment around you. If you have competing hospitals within close proximity, there are some things that are just going to be out of our control no matter how much money we throw at it. So I think it's a balance of making sure that the funding stream is there to support them to the level that they need to exist in their community, but also you have to take into accountability the management practices of the companies that own them. What's your take on that? And in addition to management, I would uh, agree with that, but it's not just about management because there are some who manage well, some who don't, and then there are bad actors who aren't interested in management. And I think that um, Dr. Thompson even alluded to something like that as it relates to DeQueen. But accountability is incredibly important because everyone doesn't manage the same. And some uh, hospitals are nonprofit, some hospitals are for profit. And so I think that it is the state's duty to ensure that there's adequate accountability. But I would also add that I don't think that we could can continue to separate um, the issue uh, or the issues all around. Uh, uh, health care payment and health care reimbursement with health care as a whole. So we can't um, look at this issue and not look at the, um, the changes and the transformations that we've seen, whether we're talking about uh, the Affordable Care Act, whether we're talking about um, how we're seeing more and more physicians operate in a clinical setting or in a small hospital setting or a large hospital setting versus hanging their own shingle. All of those things, I think, point to the direction in which healthcare is going. And so when you look at prescriptions and look at how um, medicinal um, uh, um, provisions versus hospital stays, we can even look at, for example, the a knee surgery. So, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, knee surgery re required a one week hospital stay. Um, and sometime even before that, even more. Now they're doing knee surgeries and even hip surgeries where folks are getting up on the same day and they're out of the hospital in a day or two, sometimes the same day. And so when we look at uh, some of the standards that Dr. Thompson talks about being changed, I don't know if it's a bad thing and it means death and doom uh, to our hospitals. We just have to figure out the system is changing and transforming. We need to meet people where they are and I think um, West, the hospital in West Memphis, I think, gives us an example of sort of the micro hospital model mm -hmm. that we're seeing that addresses the needs of the people, doesn't require a certain large number of hospital beds, but provides outpatient 
um, services and, and even some of the changes that they're making in my neck of the woods uh, at JRMC, we're seeing some of those same changes. So I don't think it has to spell doom. We have to make sure there's accountability and we have to make sure that we poise Arkansas and our hospitals uh, to make those changes to be successful. And I think that hopefully we'll be able to help the queen um, build from the ground up as they intend to and um, provide that health care and provide those jobs for that area. And, and that'll be beneficial for the state. So what about this then? I know Dr. Thompson, he um, was also hinting at potentially changing current state licensing requirements where local communities <coughs> must have a full service acute care medical center. He was saying that could be some discussions ahead of 2021. What do you think of that as a potential solution? I think everything's on the table for discussion because the landscape is changing. Uh, doing business the way we used to do it, especially in rural Arkansas, they may have to look at adapting to a emergency care setting and then, you know, transferring. I think that's going to be the importance of communities collaborating together and working together to, to expand the network. I know Senator Hickey ran a piece of uh, legislation, was successful in getting it through this last time, that if a hospital goes into receivership, that that licensure will rest with the Rural Development Association and they will control the licensure to make sure that the pathway forward is there. And so I think people are realizing we just can't uh, be passive about how we take care of rural Arkansas. Access, you know, accessibility uh, to providers is still an ongoing issue uh, that we have to look at so as to keep people out of the hospital and keep them from having to go to the hospital. We have to open up the avenues of providers of all levels having greater access to those patients and patients having greater access to providers and try to break down some of these barriers that have been prohibitive and ask the question why are they going to the hospital in the first place and what can we do to prevent them from having to go to the hospital. Senator Hamer, Representative Flowers, thanks so much for joining us back on the show. Thank, you. Thank you. And stay with us when we come back. The White House and Congressional Democrats find rare agreement in their desire for a major infrastructure deal. I'll talk to former Little Rock Mayor Mark Stodel about what it'll take to make that happen and Arkansas's biggest needs. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. New ice cream cookie sandwiches from Sonic. Delicious cookies and real ice cream are on a summer reunion tour. They taste so good live. Hurry in for Sonic Nights. New 149 ice cream cookie sandwiches and half price shakes after eight. Success Vision has incredible prices. I got two pairs of glasses in about an hour for only $39. I got my eye exam next door. Success Vision has over a thousand frames to choose from. It's a one-stop shop for buying glasses. 12 years and the service keeps getting better. It's a 10 out of 10. This is my fifth year with Success Vision and I'm happier than ever. You better for 39 in an hour for less. Come see us today, Success Vision Express. Sold it, sold it, sold it. Absolute Grewsbury Lakefront Real Estate Auction at 85 Buckhead Trail on the Tannenbaum Peninsula. With an extraordinary 5,200 square foot luxury home custom built by David Hendricks in 2012 with no expense spared. Also selling two covered boat slips, guns, boats, furniture, and much more. Everything is selling regardless of price live, on site, and online. Thursday, May 30th, starting at 10 a.m. Go to WilsonAuctioneers.com. Uh, sold it, sold it, sold it. Come and enjoy a new experience in shopping for your home. At Aladdin Rugs and Home Decor, we have over 5,000 rugs in the latest colors and styles. Bring your pillows, your pillow shams, and sizes. We will help you select the perfect rug. We're number one in customer service with 15,000 square feet of rugs, unique home decor, wallpaper, and flooring. Remember, buy today, take it home today, and save. Why wait? Join Planet Fitness by May 14th for just $1 down, $10 a month with no commitment. Get tons of cardio and strength equipment. Use our 30-minute circuit. Plus, get free fitness training. Work out the way you want in our judgment-free zone for just $1 down and $10 a month. No commitment now through May 14th. This deal ends soon. Join in club or online at planetfitness.com. You've got this. Join at any Central Arkansas Planet Fitness. Hurry, this offer ends Tuesday, May 14th. Bacon, Swiss cheese, juicy chicken on a King's Hawaiian bun. Oh, what else is it saying? Oh, it's saying, oh, it's saying you still owe me that 30 bucks. Hang up! Hurry into Sonic for the King's Hawaiian Chicken or Burger Club and try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. 
Welcome back to Capitol View. In Arkansas and across the country, for that matter, leaders are looking for ways to repair and replace crumbling infrastructure. In the coming days, we'll see a lot more talk about it in the nation's capital. And joining me to discuss that and much more is someone who has made his voice heard in that discussion, former Little Rock Mayor Mark Stodola. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Jesse. Glad to be here. So I know we were saying before we started taping that we promised we didn't plan this or anything, but one year ago, almost to the day, you announced that you weren't going to be running for re-election as Little Rock Mayor, of course, to position a position that you held for 12 years. So what has your transition back to the private <laughs> sector been like? Of course, I have to ask you about that first. You just went back to what you were doing before you became mayor, which is practicing as an attorney. Right. I'm uh, of counsel with the Barber Law Firm, and I'm focusing my energies on uh, uh, government uh, uh, relations and uh, uh, commercial transactions and some land use issues, and, and certainly the whole idea of a public-private partnership as it pertains to the, the building of uh, the infrastructure that you just mentioned. Uh, my 12 years, uh, over that 12 years, we saw a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure growth. So I'm pretty, pretty pleased with, uh, with what, that, uh, what that means in terms of uh, accomplishments. Uh, everything from Robinson Center Auditorium to uh, $172 million worth of roads and, and bridges and, and drainage systems in the city. Uh, the, um, uh, 12th Street Station that we built in Midtown and uh, two, two um, uh, fire uh, stations that are being built, the Panky Building out west. So a lot of, a lot of capital infrastructure work to be done. Um, we did actually, interestingly enough, we did 11 miles of sidewalks four feet wide. Uh, that's 193 football fields long for anybody that wants to really kind of get a, <laughs> a grip a on what, what that really means. <laughs> uh, so those are the things that, that are happening in cities around the country, and we're still looking for Congress to to be a partner. So let's talk about that a little bit. So I know Infrastructure Week kicks off uh, tomorrow in mostly D.C., yeah. but around the country. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, this past week, Democratic congressional leaders said that they reached a, at least an agreement with President Trump to seek a $2 trillion deal on infrastructure. Now, of course, the big question is how to pay for it. Who ultimately should decide that? Should it be the Trump administration to come up with a plan, Congress? How do we pay for this? Well, you know, we had that excitement a year ago, and, and it mm -hmm. fell flat. So uh, the fact that they did not discuss how it was going to be funded is a significant issue. Um, I think the president is probably going to look to Congress to come up with some ideas. Uh, I think Congress is going to look to the president to come up with some ideas. There is a $2 trillion federal gap uh, uh, over a 10-year period, and so we've got, uh, we've got infrastructure that's falling apart. Uh, we have got, uh, to give an example in, in terms of the importance of maintaining the infrastructure, last year there were 11 significant weather events in the country, uh, each one costing over $1 billion in terms of expense, uh, with over 100 people that were killed because of these events, because of failing systems, failing infrastructure systems. And so the whole idea of resiliency uh, is very, very important to, to I, you know, rather than wait for the disaster to occur and then fund FEMA to come in and spend millions of dollars after the fact, we need to get on the front end of it. And so that's really a function of Congress uh, to do that. And uh, I'm hopeful that they're going to come up with a way uh, a, a creative way. I do think there's going to be some more public-private partnerships, creative ways to try and finance these issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've done, uh, as I said, we've got, we've got about $2 billion worth of infrastructure needs right here in Little Rock. And we have done improvement district taxes, we've done sales taxes, uh, we've uh, refunded bonds, uh, tax-exempt bonds, uh, we've dedicated millages, uh, we've done all of these things and put that burden uh, on the local uh, citizen, the local taxpayer. And <clears throat> I, I would hope that Congress will figure that they've got to come in and help as well. And then when you say public-private partnerships, of course, that can be a lot of different things. What, what's maybe like one example that you could throw out that you think has potentially worked in Little Rock or something or that you've seen in Arkansas that could potentially work on a more nationwide level? Well, of course, in many instances, you've got you've got uh, roads that uh, are toll roads and they uh, they'll partner up with um, and for example in Oklahoma they partnered up with Marriott I believe Marriott and Marriott mm -hmm. did did road stations and gas stations and convenience stores along the toll road and so there was a way to share in the revenue that came from those toll roads and the money that was generated from those facilities to be able to help fund some of these projects and that's one example uh, certainly um, sale leasebacks on 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 property 
are something where if you can get the money front-ended by the private sector and they've got a, a substantial and long-term rate of return, uh, that's what they're looking for. There are huge equity funds out here now looking for long-term investments and they're, you know, whether it's a transit project or whether it's um, 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 uh, something like I mentioned, those are the kind of things that are going to be, I think, looked at much more closely and hopefully uh, we come up with some more creative ideas. And then you talked about Little Rock, but as far as just Arkansas goes in general, when you do say infrastructure issues, that could be anything from, you know, roads <coughs> to airports, bridges, schools, even high-speed internet. So when you look at a state like Arkansas, what would you say is our biggest issue? I mean, the legislature oh, did golly. just pass a highway um, funding plan, <laughs> but... I served on the, the State Street Aid Committee, uh, mm. where we had about $20 million to give to various cities to do resurfacing. And uh, the, the number of petitions that came in for money was just astounding. And um, so I would tell you that I think statewide in Arkansas, local roads and, and, and bridges are critical, critical to our communities uh, in terms of getting kids to school, getting people to work. Uh, the whole economic um, infrastructure of our of our state is is really tied to that. Uh, the other issue I would I would put right up there, of course, is the issue of broadband mm -hmm. and and technology. And that's one of the things at the national level that we've been stressing is water systems, uh, roads and bridges, and and uh, internet deployment, uh, broadband deployment. And that's key to the issue of education of our kids. Uh, the governor certainly recognizes that, and uh, I think mayors around the around the state. Uh, and certainly in the country recognize that as well. And then I got to come full circle with you too. So you said a year ago, you know, once a mayor, always a mayor. And then when asked <laughs> if you'd ever enter, you know, a, another campaign, another race again, you said, well, never say never. <laughs> Has anybody approached you or have you ever thought about making a run for Congress in the near future since you've done it in the past? <laughs> <laughs> never say never. <laughs> okay, uh, but I'm 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 happy uh, right now. Uh, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing, and uh, my kids are graduating from college this weekend. Uh, that'll be a significant relief, and they've done it in four <laughs> years. So for all of those watching, it can yes. be done. And one of them uh, interned with us, and he was great. One of them interned, yeah. One of them interned here <laughs> yep. uh, for a summer, and and had a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, you know, the future. Who knows what the future holds? I I, I love what I'm doing. And I suspect I'll be doing that for a long time to come. Okay. Well, hey, we appreciate you coming back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Coming up after a quick break, we'll examine the new law that could help bring closure to families of Arkansans who have been missing for years. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. Hunting season is here, and Worldwide Weapons has you covered. From archery to hunting and tactical rifles, shotguns, handguns, gear, and accessories. Come see us today for the best selection of Weatherby in the state, along with a huge inventory of knives to choose from. Only at Worldwide Weapons. For over 30 years, Townley Pool & Spa has been Central Arkansas's hot tub headquarters, offering hot spring spas, the industry leader in saltwater hot tubs. This low-maintenance water care system will have you in your hot spa more. Take advantage this month and receive a free salt system with your hot spring spa. Spend more time with your family soaking in hot water. Be better, feel better. Now with a free salt system with your hot spring spa. Every day made better with a hot tub from... Ah, uh, Townley. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Homeowners Relief Line now. New laws are in effect that may save your home. She was able to be there for me when I was younger, and I'm really grateful to be able to be there for her. Superior Senior Care, they search for a good match for my mom. I get to spend time with her. She's there. She's hand in a pocket on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> they have welcomed me into their home with loving arms. But we wouldn't be able to have Mimo here at home with us if it weren't for Superior Senior Care. 888-8888. Rainwater, Holt, and Sexton. Injured? Anywhere in the state. Just dial 8. That's 888-8888. Rainwater, Holt, and Sexton. Injury lawyers serving the Razorback Nation. Anywhere in the state, dial 8. Rainwater, Holt, and Sexton. If you're in 501, dial 8. 870, dial 8. 479, dial 8. If you've been injured anywhere in Arkansas, 888-8888. Rainwater, Holt, and Sexton. 
Advanced Alarm Technologies, putting home security and family safety at your fingertips. With our custom full home automation, you can protect your family no matter where you are. Advanced Alarm Technologies. Put our law enforcement experience to work for you. Advanced Alarm Technologies. Hey guys, I'm Chase Outlaw. I may know a lot about bulls, but when I need to know about my Massey Ferguson tractor, I come see my guys at Lumberjack Yamaha. They will help you find the perfect size Massey Ferguson tractor for your farm or ranch, whether it's the subcompact GC 1700s or the powerful Global Series. They have it and more. Now with ADCO financing, it's easier than ever to get approved. So y'all come check them out at Lumberjack Yamaha and Warren. And remember, we service what we sell. Your local Massey Ferguson dealer, Lumberjack Yamaha, Warren, Arkansas. Hunting season is here, and Worldwide Weapons has you covered. From archery to hunting and tactical rifles, shotguns, handguns, gear, and accessories. Come see us today for the best selection of Weatherby in the state, along with a huge inventory of knives to choose from. Only at Worldwide Weapons. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capital View. A new law aims to help law enforcement agencies crack years and even decades old crimes. It uses a website that gives a fresh look at evidence that could lead to an arrest, prosecution, and conviction. It could help families of missing Arkansans who have waited a long time for closure. When a loved one is missing, time is of the essence. As the clock ticks, a click could make sure they're found faster. The National Missing and Unidentified Person System, or NamUs, connects missing persons with unidentified remains. The database shows more than 200 unsolved missing persons cases in Arkansas, and more than 100 unidentified bodies in the state crime lab. We all know that there's far more missing persons in Arkansas than that. According to the Arkansas Attorney General's Never Forgotten website, there are nearly 500 unsolved missing persons cases in the state. A new law requires law enforcement agencies to input vital data into NamUs. Fingerprints, DNA, detailed personal descriptions, including date and place of death within 30 days. For missing kids, an agency has two hours. I know from personal experience that the not knowing destroys families and lives. State Representative Rebecca Petty's daughter was raped and murdered. Her body was found three days later. But other families have waited much longer for an answer, while some still don't have one. If there's one thing we can do by bringing this together to solve these uh, cases. I just can't express enough how important it is. And we're back to wrap it all up after this. You're watching Capital View on Sunday morning. It's a touchdown, all right, all over the carpet. It's a stain. It's time for the boys in blue. The boys in blue can clean your carpet, upholstery, tile and grout, even your hardwoods. You know, you should call the best in the business. Call the boys in blue. The boys in blue. Woo pig. Injured? Let's talk about Arkansas. Rainwater Holtz and Sexton is an Arkansas law firm filled with Arkansas lawyers helping Arkansas people. We're right here, ready to serve and protect the people of Arkansas. We won't charge you a penny unless we recover money for you. If you've been injured, we're local lawyers with a local number. Anywhere in the state, dial 8-888-8888. Function multi pro tailgate available only on the next generation GMC Sierra during GMC's truck month. Get zero percent financing on most GMC Sierra and Canyon models, or get over 9,500 total value on this next generation Sierra SLT when you finance through GM Financial. See your Arkansas Select GMC dealer. You're watching Capital View Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. 
Welcome back. At a time when much of the U.S. was still segregated, African Americans were called to serve their country in World War II. An elite group of them became known as the Tuskegee Airmen. This week, the nation lost a Tuskegee Airman who was an Arkansas native. Dr. Granville Coggs was born in Pine Bluff in 1925. He graduated from what was Dunbar High School in Little Rock. After serving as an aerial gunner in the Army, Coggs graduated from Harvard Medical School, and he was briefly sweet mates with Martin Luther King while in Boston. Dr. Coggs became a renowned radiologist and breast cancer specialist. Later in life, he became a runner and won several gold medals in the National Senior Games. He's also a member of the Arkansas Black Hall of Fame. Dr. Granville Coggs was 93 years old. And that does it for today's show. Don't forget, you can now take Capital View on the go. Download the Capital View podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back with an all-new Capital View next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.